obviously you guys are aware i've spoken about it before chris Alia has essentially you know what the last three months or so two months his life got turned upside down due to some inno- it was such an innocuous thing as well read looking it back it seemed as if this one female who chris might or might have not had any sort of sexual encounter with was just bored at home watching netflix and it seemed like unbeknownst to her she had no idea chris Leah was starring in you so she puts her netflix on watches this show and then suddenly you know i'm assuming because of you as well because netflix is, does that thing where you're watching when when netflix does that annoying thing where when you watch a new when you watch a, a show for the first time it shows you the most recent season it doesn't show you from the beginning so she probably started from season two saw crystal lee and won the scenes i was like hey i know this guy and and then as it you know as the show carried on she then was you know spoiler alert she figures out that this guy is a sexual predator or or yeah or he's kind of yeah he's a sexual predator in the show on you and she's like hey i've got experience with this guy in real life and he does that and then that's the, then she goes on twitter she she talks about her experience and it's suddenly a whole you know flipping platoon of women come out and accuse of chris of the same thing and then it turns into a, an opportunity for people to meet two other comedians with innuendos just the, the industry is toxic just an entire whole thing happened right just off that one innocuous tweet and then um it got to a point where all these friends had to kind of scramble to say something right to react to it because the problem wasn't that he was um being a sexual pest to these girls of age the issue was that supposedly he was trying to like it seemed like what they were insinuating was that allegedly chris was actively pursuing girls under age for sexual gratification right that's what the terms were which were, which was of course you know that's what the allegation were, which of course put you in pedo category right and everyone knows you know especially in hollywood you get that on you and you're done for in it there's no way you're coming back off that you could you could probably if you if you've got a good enough lawyer or you have a good enough image you could maybe get away with murder if you're a celebrity i don't know maybe you could bounce back you probably could look at oj simpson he's thriving and surviving out here but i think being a pedo is, is there's no way you can come back from that no matter how beloved you are so that came out and that was big news i was like okay that's that we have to take it seriously so the stories keep coming out and then obviously the comedians have to scramble his friends are replying and that was the first warning sign for me the fact that it was such a egregious allegation that it just i think the moment it, for me personally again this is just coming from a dude's point of view i'd say if i hear about a guy being you know um creepy and sliding into random girls dms just doing what i don't know just doing what a young guy would do even if they didn't have his position or didn't have his privilege and being crystal clear, i'm not too mad at it is it annoying yes is it embarrassing yes is it um morally not right thing to do if that person has a partner yes of course but people cheat people lie it is what it is right that i'm not having much of an issue with the issue of course was when it comes to him potentially dealing with minors right that's where it gets a bit funny but then at that point or not funny it's when it gets really serious at that point if you're his friend that's where it starts to become a thing of like okay i'm not crafting a statement and putting it up on social media i'm not going to say anything in public because i might number one incriminate myself somehow unbeknownst to me you never know what you might say in the heat of the moment that might make you look really mad especially in a court of public opinion and number two i might make things worse for the person accusing because it takes the shine because that's a problem too that happens the accuser comes out with an allegation and then the people coming up to defend or lend an ear are so powerful and popular they sort of drown out the actual accuser which is the complete opposite of believable women so you just shut the fuck up wait for everything to settle down and kind of see where the evidence falls not even falls but just see what transpires see what comes of this issue what is the actual truth of the matter from what we can ascertain and look you know of course brendan shaw and brian callan got on camera and like crying like babies which is really horrible to see you know they, they supposedly were best friends with this guy and immediately threw him under the bus callan was like oh i never told her this guy i don't really know him that well i never saw anything him or his agent whoever you believe goes on and and goes ahead and deletes every image of brian callum with chris on his instagram they take you know like insane stuff brendan is sobbing and stuff and it's just nonsense isn't it nonsense reply just like what is going on here this guy's not been he's not having his day in court we don't know we don't have any evidence we've just seen these screenshots messages and accounts but we don't know anything and then guess what time progresses and we get to a point now where what is what the allegation actually is and what the truth is are completely different the truth of the matter is that from what we've seen so far especially after two months or so with various other articles coming out is that most likely they're not chris is a creep most likely they're not chris is a really bad date 
right? He doesn't necessarily pay the girls any attention. He's not, yeah, he's not a very attentive. He doesn't seem to necessarily care about their general well-being, or he doesn't necessarily take any pride in how they are going to feel on that day. He doesn't try to make it special. He just essentially slides in their DMs, gets them to come to a comedy club, and then smack, bang, boom, off you go, son. And of course, these girls are young, impressionable. They have a heightened sense. It's like, you know, I'd imagine seeing Chris the way he is on social media and then seeing him in real life. You'd be like, what the hell's going on? It's a complete opposite of who he is on social. I get it. So they're disappointed. They're annoyed, right? That they meant to meet their hero, who you've probably taken a bit of advantage of them because I don't miss. That's, that's why I don't really agree with the whole that dynamic. I don't think you should be pursuing your fans. I think that's a bit weird, right? If, if some groupie wants to hook up with you, fair enough, whatever. But you shouldn't be going after your fans. Right? That's a bit odd, right? You shouldn't be kind of trying to sleep with them. You should just be keeping them at arm's length in that, res in that respect. But if you are going to do it, you got to treat them a bit nicer, isn't it? So I think that's what he's guilty of. Is, is he a nonce? Probably not from what we've seen so far. The, all these friends, Whitney Cummings as well, another one that was getting all hysterical and, you know, complaining that this was some sort of affront to her and she somehow made it all about her and all this sort of wacky nonsense stuff like just the epitome of terrible friends but one person that has stood fast and kind of um has really been a good friend with this guy with his crystal has been this dude called uh, mike leonushi who is ref kindly referred to as chris's open in the podcast and he basically made a statement um detailing exactly how troubling it's been um dealing with this whole issue in public and i'm gonna play a bit of it now People People Come on let's play it First of all A lot of people In the, in, in, in the previous weeks they, they, they I would get messages from people who, who were nice Who were actually Like I guess Fans oh, or, or whatever uh, Or people that knew me And they'd be like Why, why are you staying silent? Why, like, why are you not defending your friend publicly? And I, and and I, and I'm like, like, first of all, here, here's what's crazy to me. I don't know anyone a response. I don't know anyone a response. This is what's crazy about this world is, I would be online, and all this shit was going on about my best friend, and I, I'm seeing it, and I know what I know, and then people are like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna say? And then you see other comedians saying stuff. You see comedians attacking, and you're like. Well, this is so weird, and it's just like, why, why, why do I don't even know you people? Yeah, I'm thankful that I have subscribers and followers, but I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you. And that's the truth of the matter, and that's something that I just never understood at the time. And again, maybe it's my warped idea of friendship. I generally think like there is obviously a, there's a there's a how do I explain this in a clear way? There is obviously a large swaths of the population that are in uproar whenever something happens with a celebrity right they're always like shocked and appalled oh my god i can't believe he did this i can't believe she did that but for the most part most of these celebrity dramas that we hear about public figure dramas or gossips or you know missteps you can usually exp you, there's usually no explanation but there's usually an example that you can pull out from your own personal experience obviously a group of friends somebody that you know a family member who's gone through something similar they're not usually they're not stories that are just so far-fetched right whether it's some sort of adultery whether it's um, some sort of domestic dispute whether it's a messy divorce whether it's you know um, conflict with the children we've all got the same sort of issues in and amongst our own little communities so when people get all hot and bothered about issues it generally is a little bit like okay relax and chill out right but there's also a part of me that's like when those things happen to people that are in your family you don't disown them right you so if somebody got unless again unless it's something super heinous like you know they're a serial rapist or they're a serial murder for the most part most of the shitty things your family members do you just sort of forgive it and move on or you choose to not be in their company right but you don't necessarily go out there and publicly make a statement or you know decry them on social you don't do that right and if you do you're a woo idiot you shouldn't be you know going out there kind of putting your family on blast on your platform because you don't agree with their actions it is what it is you just continue and move on just don't talk to them it's not that big of a deal so when it happens when this happened i have sympathy with him because i do think it was a bit unfair that fans were sort of pestering him and telling him to you know it, it came from a good place i think most of the fans wanted him to back up chris so that chris wouldn't get cancelled because they love chris and maybe 
they saw the fact that he was kind of carrying on as normal as a sort of an affront like how dare you this guy's life is getting torn apart he brought you on the road he's your opener he's your kind of boss and you're not defending him but there's so many things that got I, I think that's the one thing that a lot of people don't really have a perspective on and I think maybe that's why everyone should probably read the Mark Ronson so you've been publicly shamed book right it's a seminal book really really important book it's a really quick read excellent writer is Mark Ronson but it really puts into perspective what actually goes on in a person's brain as they're getting cancelled and that was back in the, that was like what maybe five or six years ago when that book was written right um, and things have changed even more so now with the polit current political climate right so I can only imagine the kind of stress um it must put on you or how you know with everybody also knowing the power that they hold because everyone kind of knows that you know everyone talks about power imbalances but you know for the most part if you get if you're in a position where you feel as if you've been wronged by a corporation or by somebody that was kind of on paper powerful more powerful than you you can effectively end their career with a couple you know flick of the buttons flick of the wrists or flick of the thumbs you can you know what you can do so that must obviously add a heightened sense of anxiety to somebody when their friend is going through something a good friend like oh my god like if i say the wrong thing i could just not just only destroy his life also mine and everyone else it's a really nervous thing it's not easy i'd imagine being somebody's friend that's a public figure and also being pushed to make a response so i've got lots of sympathy for him in that respect and i think you know he did come he you know he doesn't really owe anyone an explanation in it the best thing you can do for your friend when they're going through something is guess what be a friend response the only person i owe is my friend all i have to do is pick up the phone call him and be yo this is crazy i know who you are i know you are a great guy with a great heart and would never do anything wrong and this is insane and i have your back and i love you that's my responsibility as a and I agree 100%. And then the last bit I play from this bit is him mentioning something briefly about the T Fat K boys. Um, yeah. <laughs> and just got to show it. Like, you need to pick your friends better. But yeah, this is a bit where he mentions it. Let's get it on here. People need to make sure they pick the right friends and not just, you know anyone that will take them but i think this this section really kind of drums it home let's see if it loads my computer is being slow because i've already got too many tabs open google chrome die 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 come on here we go here we go is it coming up no, people here, fucking here getting getting attacked by this mob and they get scared and they bail some of these people are good friends and they bail like you watch all these podcasters fucking bail like the fighter and the kid bailed. Winnie they Cummings. didn't even give it 24 hours, exactly. bro. They didn't even wait 24 hours. They fucking put out a video. I I, I don't know what's going on. I I'm scared. They, dude, they'll even tell you they regret doing that. That was the worst thing they could have done. But dude, they, they fucking it. blew up in their face. But they didn't even they got and, and, and like I, I don't I can't get mad at these people at these other comics who who were just like oh I, I you know I I I don't know what to say da, da, da. like I can't get mad at them because they panicked. They panicked and they'll tell you they panicked. But that's the interesting part of me for me on this issue is that I think this is maybe a cautionary tale to everybody sort of like trying to make it in Hollywood or trying to have a career in the entertainment industry. You there needs to be there needs to be an acceptance that you're obviously going to be swimming in a sea full of sharks, right? Everyone is essentially your friend until they're hungry, right? And they just sort of like have to, you know, do what they have to do to survive. But I think if you're gonna come into it, you have to if you if you you know which I would then advise try your best to make your career outside of Hollywood, especially now with the advent of podcasting and YouTube and streaming on Twitch and the internet. So you don't Patreon. You don't need to be within the Hollywood system to make it and be successful. You can do your own thing on your own little island, figuratively, make a few money and just do your own thing and not worry about um, being under pressure to make public statements or whatnot. But if you are gonna do it the best thing to do is to ensure that you have a solid group of friends which looks like Chris Delia did have that you came into it prior to you being successful friends that you've kind of had around from school maybe friends that you met on the on the kind of amateur circuit whatever they may be friends that, that have at least seen you sleeping on someone's floor friends that you've had to maybe share a slice of pizza with so that when things do go wrong or when people turn on you or when the, you know you're not the hot stuff in the industry anymore you still have people that you can go home to who will you know remind you of everything that you've achieved or who will make you feel good or who just be there for you and be supportive if you go through a really you know public um incident or public allegation or you know 
um, such as what Chris Ali has allegedly gone through or is going through now at the moment. It's not allegedly because he's actually going through it. But however, that's the best thing that you can do. Really ensure that you have a good base, um, a good solid uh, base of friends around you that have been around you from, you know, at least before you got successful. That's going to really help because if you depend on having, if you kind of, if you kind of trick yourself into believing the friends that you meet once you're in the industry who are gassing you up are going to be there when things go bad, you are badly mistaken. Brian Cannon was one of Chris's best friends. They did the 10 minute podcast together for years. One of the, one of my favorite podcasts of all time, man. Legendary. Him, Will Sasso and Brian Cannon, right? Chris Lee, Brian Cannon, Will Sasso did a 10 minute podcast. One of the best comedian podcasts that ever existed. And then he's deleting all the pictures of him on his flipping social media feed unfriending him on Instagram it's insane like if it's, if that's your again like I said if that's your friend friends you owe them your loyalty you have to you just is what it is I have some friends that are shitty people but I just have to accept the way they are because they're my friends because if you're if they're your friend you're not going to try and change them that's not what friendship is about friendship is accepting the person for the way they are with all their faults and their errors as you have and just accepting them for their bad because the good far outweighs the bad. That's what actual friendship is. I know you're a dick. I know you don't. I don't. Know, I know you always ask me for money. I know you're always late. I know you're a crappy person to go out with, and you get aggressive. But the the goods are the, the good times are so good. I'm willing to put up with the bad. That's what friendship should be about. And again, unless they you know are a serial rapist or a serial killer or something of that ilk, you shouldn't be throwing your friends under the bus, especially publicly. Especially publicly, especially even the Brian Callan and Chris, uh, the Brian Callan and Brandon Schultz thing makes it worse because I remember at the beginning of the of this of the apology or the statement they made when they were crying, they said something like, "Oh, we haven't even spoken to him yet." They kind of let that slip. It's like you haven't even spoken to this guy and you're already making a public statement. So again, don't get me wrong. If you're a celebrity and you're golf, you know, you you're someone of some sort of notoriety you know and you agree with your friend behind the scenes hey i kind of have to step in front of this and tell people that i'm not really your friend but you know behind the scenes obviously i'm your friend and you agree it's still a scummy thing it's still a douchey thing to do but fair enough do what you have to do but to just come out there and just not even let the like and mike said right not to even let the story develop it for 24 hours it's just insane and really makes you question how these guys always go on, especially some of these some of these other guys are always going on about how they operate outside of the industry and they're not involved in Hollywood and they kind of move to the beat of their own drum. But when real conflict or when real issues come about in the industry, they seem to all kind of like you know shy away and you know and kind of publicly disown everyone. It's really really interesting to see, man. Pretty strange, but anyway. I guess in that case, we know know that most likely we'll see a comeback of Chris Aaliyah very soon. It seems like um, if his friends stepping out and making a statement, it means that more likely than not, we'll probably hear from Chris Aaliyah soon. And hopefully, it's a lesson learned for everybody involved in it. Like, don't be quick to throw your friends on the bus. Don't treat all allegations like a verdict of guilt, or not, like a guilty verdict. Try and no, I let at least let somebody have their day in court. And yeah, that's all you can do, really, isn't it? And if it trans transpires that that person was guilty of those heinous crimes, you know, throw him in jail, throw him in jail, lock him up and throw away the key. No problem with that, but give people a chance to prove their innocence at least, man. Mamma mia. But anyway.